You just got your appraisal back and it's short. You've decided that you're gonna purchase this home for $400,000 and the appraisal comes in at $375,000. Now what? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Or you're worried about it. You put an offer in, you got an offer accepted, it's $400,000, what if the house comes back short? What then? So that's the topic of our discussion today. Let's start by breaking down what are the variable options. When you first put in an offer, you can option to do an appraisal waiver. Yikes, I would not recommend that because because you are offering to buy the house no matter what the house appraises for. Unless you have a huge down payment and the appraised value doesn't matter to you, then I would say you probably don't want to do a complete appraisal waiver. In some cases though, what will happen is clients and real estate agents will decide to put in some appraisal gap. They'll say, we will buy the house if it appraises down to $390,000 and we'll still pay $400,000 for that house. So an appraisal guarantee up to $10,000. Well, in that case, if the house appraises for $375,000, you've agreed to pay $390,000 for that house. You haven't agreed to pay $375,000. So then it's up to the sellers to decide if they're willing to cover that gap and come down to a sale price of $375,000. And if the sellers agree with the appraised value of $375,000, then you would end up paying $385,000 for that house, right? Because you had a $10,000 appraisal guarantee. So back to square one. You have bought a house for $400,000. It appraises for $375,000. What are some of the different options? Well, the first is that the sellers can come down to the meet the appraised value, minus any gap, appraisal gap that you've agreed to. So when you negotiate with them, you tell them that the appraised value came low, you probably are going to want to send them a copy of the appraisal. You don't have to, it is your appraisal, but you may want to because you want to show them the material evidence that you have that the house is worth $375,000. When they get that report, they may look at it and say, wait a minute here, there are some errors in this appraisal report. Like for example, the house says that there's three bedrooms and there's really four. Or my goodness, I have seven acres, not three acres. Or my gosh, this is really a ranch and not a two story. Or there's a pole barn on here and they didn't acknowledge that. So different things like that. For those reasons, you can go ahead and dispute the appraisal. So if there's material things that are wrong with the appraisal, you can have it corrected and say, hey, wait a minute, there's a pole barn here. Please um, acknowledge and make proper adjustments for that. Here's pictures of it. Or you can say, hey, this house is a four bedroom house. I see you marked it as a three bedroom. Um, could you correct it and then make adjustments as, as appropriate? So there's an, a formal appraisal dispute that you and your agent go through in order to um, dispute that appraisal. Sometimes the, seller, the listing agent will submit that data to us. So if the house appraises for higher, if the, the dispute works and the appraiser will come up on value, well then you have that tool then to use to renegotiate. Very seldom, very, very seldom can we throw out the appraisal. Can we throw it out completely and do a new, new appraisal? Very seldom. Because this appraisal was selected with the HVCC guidelines, Home Value Code of Conduct, in which an appraiser was randomly selected for the purpose of appraising the house fairly accurately, but it is an opinion of value, so it may be different than your opinion of value. With that being said, we also have to run what's called collateral underwriter. We run this collateral underwriter, it goes through quality control, and it risk grades the appraisal, one through five. And if it's a five or a four, it's a very, very high risk appraisal, maybe high risk for overvaluation. It could also be high risk for under evaluation. Maybe there are comps that should have been used that are better justified. So in this CU report, we get a list of the 15 top comps that are in the area, if there's 15 that are available or so, and it shows which ones are the highest, best rated according to the house. Of course, you wouldn't have a 40-year-old house compared to a new construction house, so when you send in comparables to dispute and you have a 40-year-old house, you can't really send in new construction comparables and call that legit or equal. The other thing is, let's say you have a bi-level house that you're selling and you compare it to a ranch style house, that's probably not going to be a good comparable either. So with that being said, this collateral underwriter report will, will grade these comparables and put them on the list. And then we can see where the appraiser took the three comps and where they rate on this CU report. So maybe there's some comps that are higher ranking. 
Um, maybe in the top five, the appraiser only used one of, only took one comp out of five, and there's four other comps that could be used. So I usually like to use this CU report, cross-reference it, and see if there's any better comparables. So aside from that, let's say that you try disputing the appraisal, the appraisal doesn't come up, or you don't bother disputing the appraisal, you still have this $375,000 appraisal average. So I hope this is helpful. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to go through and cover. So in summary, appraisal comes back short. Number one, the sellers can meet the appraised value. Number two, you can meet in the middle. So you could say, okay, well, I'm going to come down, the sellers are going to agree to come down to $385,000 from $400,000, and you agree to bring the difference of that $15,000 to closing. You could, the final option we haven't talked about is if there's no meeting in the middle, if there's no compromise, if there's no buyers and sellers agree, then the contract becomes null and void, and except for if you've done a full appraisal waiver in which you've agreed to buy the house no matter what the house appraises for. Aside from that, then if you can't come to an agreement, the appraise, the purchase agreement can be um, null and void, you can do a full unconditional uh, release and get your earnest money deposit back. With that being said, you might have your inspection cost out of pocket and an appraisal out of pocket, so it doesn't come without some cost, but you will not lose your earnest money deposit based on a house not appraising if you guys can't come to an agreement. So with that being said, the last and final thing is, it's a great idea before you put in your offers to have your real estate agent as agents to run some comparables and to see, okay, this is what comparables are looking like in the market area, comparable to your house. So these are the various scenarios that and outcomes that could take place based on, based on these comps. So it's always a good idea to run some comps, see what that looks like, and then put your best strategy together, together and go for it. The best thing you can do is go for it and then see what the outcome is. You really want to get that house under contract for you and the sellers and then work through a viable solution because most likely the sellers aren't gonna wanna put the house back on the market, they do want to work things out with you and they do want to sell their house that's the key when you have a willing seller and a willing and able buyer then there's usually a meeting in the middle and that's the goal thank you for watching have an amazing day please like share and subscribe out to this youtube channel i put out videos multiple times a week have an awesome day